where this happened, how this happened, why this happened, if you know the geography of it, it all begins to make sense. So we come to the Arabian Peninsula. You have Yemen. Yemen is cool. Yemen is fine. In Yemen, there are livable conditions. But if you go a bit to the side of Yemen, you come to this area called Hijaz, this dry desert area where there is barely any rainfall. There are no rivers. It's very dry. But what there are are holes in the ground. So when it does rain, you create small ponds, small water holes, and that's what the people have to survive on. They have those and they have water wells. As for the water holes, there's barely any water in them, and the people, the tribes, and their animals would all drink from the same water. And the tribes then, they would have goats and horses, sheep, dogs. They would survive based on the water holes or the water wells. The problem with the water wells within the Arabian Peninsula was that each well was about two to three hundred kilometers apart. So you would have to travel a very far distance to get from one well to the next. Not only that, but if you had a lot of people with you, then you won't be able to finish. So if you're a hundred people in a tribe, if you're a hundred people in a clan, it will take everyone about two to three hours until they're able to drink the water. Which means you cannot bring an army of 50,000 to 100,000 people into the Arabian Peninsula because there is no water for them. 100,000 people drinking from the water well isn't going to work. If there was a river, people will live there. If there was a river, people can drink, then they can harvest their crop, their potatoes, right? They, didn't, they lived in tents. If there was a river, then as they wait for their harvest, they'd have to build houses to protect them in the winter. As they build houses, you have locksmiths, you have engineers, you have architects. Slowly, you develop a small town. You end up staying in that town. You build a community. Another community would want to come and visit your community. You begin to trade goods. In Arabia, there was none of that. You had tribes that just moved around because there was no water. When you understand this, you understand why no one in the world, no government, no nation was interested into going into Arabia. Because there was nothing there. What was that again? If the Caesar of Rome was to go into the Arabian Peninsula, first of all, he cannot command his entire army to walk that entire desert. And for what? What is there? but a bunch of tribes. And these tribes were not united. So you have 300, 400, 500 different tribes within the Arabian Peninsula. And the way the tribe would be, would be, for example, this man, he has 10 kids. And each one of those kids has 10 kids. So you have 100 people right now. Now that's already gotten a bit large, but when each one of those 100 children has 10 children, now you have a thousand people within this one tribe, then it's too difficult to move around together. So they start to split up into Butun. You split a hundred here, a hundred here, a hundred here. You take this many goats, you take this many dogs, you take this many horses. Because you cannot travel this much and survive with this many people. So they split up. Like you have several different, one of the biggest tribes, of course, as we know, was Quraysh. Quraysh was one of the greatest, biggest tribes. In Uhud, in Uhud, three to four thousand warriors in Uhud. They're all cousins. Three to four thousand cousins. This is the way in the Arabian Peninsula, it was a whole family. And the strength, the identity of a person came from his tribe. So you have tribes with 30,000 people. You have tribes with 40,000 people. You have tribes with only two, three, four thousand, and they try to join up together to protect each other. Why? Because if you are without a tribe in the Arabian Peninsula, then you're a nobody. Then you can easily be taken, kidnapped, and enslaved. The tribe is everything. The tribe is strength. The tribe is identity. It's more than national flag. The tribe is more than family. The tribe is you. In the poetry books, when they speak about the ancient Arabs, they describe how if two people from the same tribe, if you saw 
a person from your tribe fighting another person, before you ask what happened, before you ask anything, before you ask what the issue is or who's right, who's wrong, the person would come and kill the person, kill the person from the other tribe, and then move along. And they wouldn't even talk about it. Because there was no need to. So you're from my tribe, I'm from your tribe. That's all that matters. We have strength within our tribes. And this is the way they survived. They would go, they would go into the territory of another tribe, take their goods, and survive based on this. Or you could make deals between the tribes. Now, what this means is, the reason this is important to know, is because there's no unity in the Arabian Peninsula. And when there's no unity, that's very good. It's very good for someone who wants to come and establish something. Because there's not one tyrant within the Arabian Peninsula that can order everyone to be or to uphold one of his commands. There is no Pharaoh in the Arabian Peninsula. There is no Caesar. There is no Nimrod. Every tribe has its chiefs. But I don't listen to your chief. You don't listen to my chief. This is all important because this was the perfect place for a message to be established. Number one, is two main reasons. Number one, the fact that there was no unity between the tribes, it meant that everything was ready for the prophet to come and create, establish this new movement. This movement where he could bring people from all over the place. 